So hello everybody and happy Monday. Into this Monday we're actually going through the releases that they've made for Dataflows and Power Query. Where it's been released in Dataflows, it's not available in Power Query yet, but it will come, hopefully. <laughs> I think they will come anyhow. Okay, let's get started. There are some amazing updates. Okay, first of all, diagram view. There is a new diagram view. We had it before in Power Query, but don't know if you've used it, something called dependency view, I think. And it was that you could actually see how different queries in Power Query were related to each other, but customers wanted to have more functionality to that. So what they've requested and what you, know, you guys are going to get is that you will be able to get not only step level dependency, but you will get also query level dependency. You will be able to do transformations on the diagram view. Before it was just a, a an image that you can you just could see and you couldn't do any editing. You can do it now, and it is now integrated in the Power Query view. So you will be able to see your queries and work with your queries at the same time. So these are great features for those of you that wanted to see these in my view i think the diagram view is going to be great when you you know get a new power bi or power query file that you haven't worked with to see how everything is related to each other so it's going to be easier to work with it so the second update is this schema view and this is uh, quite interesting if you have big models and you're working with a lot of data because Power Query previews the data in the background, it can get a little bit slow. So the schema view will allow you to see your tables and it will allow you to do transformations quicker without actually previewing the data. So the type of transformations you will be able to do is, for example, reorder columns, or you will be able to rename or delete columns, find columns, that type of stuff without actually waiting for things to load. So that is actually quite neat. And there are two features coming to data flows that are already in Power Query, and it is add column from example and add web from example. I love add web from example. I didn't know it wasn't available in Power Query online on data flows. It wasn't, but now it is. So there is a great, great update. Now, fuzzy matching. Fuzzy matching is something that we had in Power Query, but they are introducing two new types of fuzzy matching in data flows that hopefully will come to Power Query too very soon. The first one is when you have, you know, fuzzy matching is when you have similar names, like you have, for example, misspellings, you have uh, Ruth with capital letters, everything, and then Ruth just with the first one, capital letter, those type of things. And you want to do calculations on Ruth, you, you need to understand that, to make your data set understand that, that Ruth is the same person of the same value. Now there are two new types of fuzzy matching. There is fuzzy grouping, and it will allow you to group things together. Let's say that you want to find all these and just make one row of it, if you would like to have like a dimension table with unique values of names. So that would be a perfect example for this fuzzy grouping. It will allow you to group by like what you would do in Power Query and then, you know, put all the names that are similar together. But there are times when you don't want to group things. We just want to leave the table as is and identify this Ruth with capitals and Ruth with small letters as Ruth. So you can now have an add column that will give you the match that it thinks is better best for these two in a new column and then you can work with them which is wonderful imagine with email newsletters and this you know emails for you know marketing campaigns and all that stuff if you are collecting emails through web or those things require fuzzy matching and i'm looking forward to give this a go but hopefully it will be available in power query online on power query desktop it's not available there yet this is just for data flows for now but give it a go there if you want to test it. Uh, the next thing is copy paste between Power Query Online, the data flows, and Power Query Desktop. So now you can just copy paste between the two interfaces and it will make the life a lot easier because a lot of people are doing the transformations in Power Query Desktop and then transforming them into Power, so pasted them into Power Query Online and you have to copy the code. Not anymore. Not anymore. Now, next one. This is for data flows only. 
for now, <laughs> for now, you will be able to copy data. You can copy data in Power Query, but I don't remember if you have this granularity because now you will be able to copy the entire table, a column or a value. I don't remember if you can do this in Power Query desktop or not, but you can do that in data flows, which is quite nice. They preview data, obviously, they, just, they won't give you everything, but good enough. Now this you have been able to do in Power Query for the longest time, but it is to be able to multi-select things, on, you know, queries on the query pane. So you have now control click and shift click the same way as you had in Power Query desktop. So that is really neat. Now here is a very, very neat one. They are creating, you know, in the formula bar on Power Query, you can only see the code for the step that you're in. If you want to see the entire query, you have to go to the advanced editor. It's not the end of the world, but now with what they've done, they have created a query script. So you will be able to change in a button on the ribbon from step script to query script. So you will be able to see everything or just the step that you're in, which is very, very neat. I love this usability tips. It's just wonderful. Okay, they have now added a new status bar that will allow you to see the number of errors, the number of columns and row count. If data profiling is enabled, you will be able to switch between 1000 um, uh, data points or the entire data set for data profiling. You will be able to toggle between a step and query scripts where we talked before, and you will be able to switch between normal data and scheme view. And some of the things are available in Power Query Desktop, some are not because, you know, for example, the query scripts are not available in Power Query yet. So hopefully we will get them very, very soon because this is really, really neat. Now we have a new connectors for data flows. We have SAP HANA, SAP uh, Business Warehouse. They, they are available in Power Query already. Snowflake Impala FH. I don't know. This is not an HR system, I think. And then you will be able to add an SQL statement on the SQL connector, which is actually quite nice. So finally, to wrap this up, there is a data flow API that will allow you to refresh your data flows. Not only that, once you refresh your data flow, it automatically allows you to refresh the data set that is connected to also, so these are great news. I am looking forward to see these things in Power Query Desktop. I believe that they will be moved there. Hopefully, fingers crossed. So if you want to give them a go, test it on Dataflows Power Query Online now. Otherwise, let's wait. Maybe they come in December for us. Hmm. Okay, this is all for today. I will see you again on Wednesday. Hope you enjoy the update and take care, stay safe. Things are getting a little bit rough out there. Um, bye bye.